Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Welcome to our service of worship at First Presbyterian Church in Green Bay. Delighted to have you here in the sanctuary 
as well as those who are joining us online, participating from your own homes. If you are at home and uh, participating in worship this morning in this way, I do need you to get something for communion for yourself. And um, that could be juice and bread. It could be a cracker and a sip of coffee. You'll be all set either way. And also, if you would care to have a little bit of water with you, you will need that early in the service. My thanks to Jill Stenson assisting me up here this morning as reader as well as uh, helping me at the table. Thank you, Jill. And a warm welcome to Jeff Verkylen, who will be at the organ as soon as he gets there. He is just running over from First United Methodist, and I'm so grateful that he's here today. Joel Marine is missing this morning. He's at home with a sick toddler, so we'll keep him in our prayers. Friends, today we are celebrating the baptism of the Lord. Now, it seems like just yesterday we were celebrating the birth of a baby in a manger. And in fact, it was just a week ago that the wise men arrived to visit that baby. But today we move on in our lectionary passages to the baptism of the Lord. To that end, we are going to remember our own baptisms this morning. So you will note that there is early in your service a reaffirmation of baptism prayer. That's a responsive one, so I'll appreciate your participation in that. And immediately following that prayer, our opening hymn, Wash, O God, Your Sons and Daughters, I invite you during the singing of that hymn to come out of your pews and come to the font and dip your hand in the water, maybe put that water on your forehead, and remember for yourself when you were baptized. Remember that you are baptized. Remember that you are also God's beloved child. We'll do that as we sing the hymns. The words will be up here on the screen, so no reason to stop singing just because you're walking to the font. I encourage you to come to the font by way of the middle aisle and return to your pew by the side aisles so we don't get too much of a traffic jam. For those who are worshiping online, please, as we sing that hymn, dip your hand in some water, put that water on your forehead, and remember your own baptism. We are also sharing in communion today. You see the table is set and all is ready. Everyone is welcome at the Lord's table. If you are online, please participate using your own elements at that time in the service. Friends, if you requested offering envelopes for this year, they are on the table at the back of the sanctuary or stop by the office during the week and pick them up. I'm sorry they were not ready last week. That was my fault. They were here, they'd arrived, and were sitting in a box in the office, and no one knew what they were. <laughs> Speaking of the table in the back, friends, we would like to fill it up this month with contributions to our Cozy Kids campaign. We're looking for mittens and hats and scarves and boots and coats and underwear and socks, anything at all that would keep elementary age children at Tank School cozy is what we're after. You can bring those contributions in all month long, and we'd love to have you participate in the Cozy Kids campaign. We have a brand new six-week Bible study beginning this week. We gather together on Zoom on Wednesday night at 6.30, or in person here at church Thursday mornings at 11. We're reading together Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth, and we'd love to have you join us. Just six weeks long, the books are $10 each and are available this morning in the workroom if you would stop by. Please sign my note there so that I know if you've paid and which of the classes you expect to attend so I can be prepared for us all. As we look ahead to the end of the month, we do have an opportunity to celebrate our Presbyterian Scottish heritage as we join together with our sister congregation, First United Presbyterian in De Pere, for the second annual Robert Burns Dinner. Details are in your announcements in the bulletin this morning, 
but I believe there is also someone here to answer your questions. Yes, I see him there. Angus McDedman is with us this morning. The Scottish cousin of our own Bruce Dedman is here, and he'd be happy to talk with you after worship today about the Burns Dinner. I will say I attended last year, and it is not to be missed. You will certainly enjoy it. And no one is required to eat haggis. Is that right, Angus? Aye. Aye, <laughs> it is. Friends, I have... <laughs> I have a number of prayers to make you aware of before we begin our service of worship today. First, our prayers are with the family of Alan Collins, who died last Monday. His funeral will be held at Blaney Funeral Home tomorrow, Monday, at 7 p.m. Visitation with the family is from 4 to 7 and a service at 7 at Blaney. Please come and join us as we surround the family with our love and prayers. We're also praying for Megan Seward, who was in um, a car accident last, last week. The car was totaled and Megan is fine. Thanks be to God. Um, we're holding in our, her in our prayers. She's sore from such a hit. Uh, we're also continuing to pray for Brett Fleming, who is the grandson of Judy Knutson Nierad. Brett was hospitalized all last week for a number of tests and observations. He's now at home, but there's still a great deal of concern for Brett and his mom and his grandma. Karen Walker has been hospitalized and is now back at home. Gene Reynolds is all settled in in his rehab place at Angel's Touch in De Pere and is receiving visitors, I understand. <laughs> Clarence Mickelson is also settled at, in, in his new place at Woodside and would be happy to have you come by. And Leah Mott asks our prayers for a surgery coming up on Tuesday this week. Let us take all those prayers and those that stay in our hearts. Let us take them to God as we worship God together this day.
Please rise as you are able and join me in the unison call to worship. The one who granted us the breath of life is present here to greet us. We praise God for the gift of life and the linking of our lives with one another. God's own spirit rests upon us, drawing us into the family of faith. We have been baptized into Christ to share in the mission entrusted to Jesus. We gather together today to remember Jesus' baptism and consider its implications for us. Let us worship God in joy. in our reaffirmation of baptism prayer. In the beginning, O oh God, your spirit moved over the water, and you created all that is, seen and unseen. We give you thanks for the gift of water that sustains all life. In the time of Noah, you destroyed evil in the water of the flood, and by your saving ark, you gave a new beginning. We give you thanks for new beginnings. You led Israel through the sea, out of slavery into the freedom of the promised land. We give you thanks for the gift of freedom and the gift of the land. In the water of the Jordan, our Lord was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, Christ set us free from sin and death and opened the way to eternal life for each of us. We give you thanks for our own baptism and the gift of eternal life. We renew our baptismal covenant today with you, O God, praying for the strength to be faithful in all things to your glory and for the service of your people. We pledge ourselves to be servants to others and to remember always that we are baptized and loved.
Please be seated. Today, as we remember the baptism of Jesus, we rejoice that we too have been baptized into the family of faith. Our lives have been committed to the way of Jesus. Yet we have wandered from that way of life. Confession allows us to turn around and rediscover the paths God intends for us. Let us pray together. Merciful God, in baptism, you promise forgiveness and new life, making us part of the body of Christ. We confess that we remain preoccupied with ourselves, separated from one another. We cling to destructive habits, hold grudges, and show reluctance to welcome one another. We allow the past to hold us captive. In your loving kindness, have mercy on us and free us from sin. Fulfill the promises of our baptism so that we may rise to new life and live together in grace. Please take a moment to offer your own silent prayer of confession. Join me in our words of assurance. As a voice from heaven said to Jesus, so in Christ God speaks to us. You are my child, my beloved. With you I am well pleased. We are forgiven, loved, and freed. Thanks be to God. Friends, as we have been forgiven in Christ, we also ought to forgive one another. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Please share a word of peace. Peter's going to come and join me. Who else will be with me today? Louis, will you come up and join us too? Lonnie's going to come up. Elliot, thank you. Good, good. I got to have somebody to talk to up here. Come on. Good morning. Nice to have you. I'm wondering, I'm wondering today what it is you remember. Do you have a good memory or not a very good memory? Let's try and think of some things together that you remember. Your wedding, Lonnie remembers her wedding. Peter, do you remember your wedding? <laughs> no. Not yet, not yet. Louis, do you remember your wedding? No, no, of course not. All right, so what do you remember, Louis? 
Anything at all. Ooh, first time at the zoo. That's a good thing to remember. Anybody remember their birthday? Or their middle name? Or what do you, what do you remember, Elliot? Remember what he had for <laughs> breakfast today, which is a good thing to remember also. So today we're, I'm asking you about your memory because we're trying to remember our baptism. But I know for most of us, right. our baptism is not something we can remember. Why? Was we were just babies. So why am I telling you to remember your baptism when you can't remember that? You were just a tiny baby. You hardly even moved around then. Hard to imagine, I know. <laughs> but we remember our baptism by remembering together when we touch that water. Did you come up and touch the water? Did everybody do that? You remember even though you were too little to remember it. You can remind yourself way down in your heart. This happened for me when I was little and it will happen for others as they come along, and it even happened for Jesus. Now, he wasn't little. He was a grown-up man by then. They did things a little differently. He also was baptized in the river. Did you know that? Anybody here baptized in the river? No, no. Or in the bay. There are some churches in our area who do that. But I want to invite you to touch that water again today and really remember way down in your heart that you were baptized with water from the font just like Jesus was baptized. We all were baptized and called God's beloved. That just means the one that God loves so much. Will you fold your hands with me and say a prayer right after me today? Dear God, Thank you for our baptism. Thank you for our baptism. Help us remember. Help us remember. Amen. Amen. You touch that water again before you head off today, okay? Touch that water again and just see if it'll help you remember. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Faithful God, whose spirit descended as a dove on Jesus, open our hearts to a spiritual baptism today. Confirm in us the gifts that enrich our knowledge and empower our speech. May your steadfast love and saving grace Help equip this family of faith to witness more courageously and serve more fully. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 42, verses 1 through 9. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry out or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people who walk upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor praise to idols. 
See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. This is the word of the Lord. Our second lesson for this day comes from the Gospel according to Matthew. In the second chapter, I'm reading verses, I'm sorry, in the third chapter, I'm reading verses 3 through 17, 13 through 17. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so for now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Friends, this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The baptismal gown that I wore is currently on an old baby doll of mine in my basement. Now, it's not as bad as that sounds. She's tucked away in a shoebox with tissue paper and everything, not just tossed in some corner. But I will admit, her hair is a mess. One of her fingers is chewed off a little bit. Not from mice that sometimes take up residence in basements, but from me long ago, Trying to stop sucking my thumb at my parents' insistence, I chewed my doll's finger instead. Uh, Beth Ann is her name. She wears the baptismal dress that I wore and the bonnet as well. When I was at my parents' home last month in Austin, Texas, I looked for the picture that I remember used to hang on the wall in my dad's study 
of me on my baptism day. It doesn't seem to be around anymore, must still be packed up. It's not readily available. But the gown itself is still intact. I suppose the fact that it's on an old baby doll has helped to preserve it. So what do you remember, or if not remember, know about your own baptism? Most of us were infants, I presume, so there isn't much actual remembering about it. But maybe you've heard stories, or you have a picture, or your own baby doll is wearing the gown you wore that day. As we hear this scripture passage again and celebrate the baptism of the Lord today, we would do well to reflect on that event for Jesus as well as our own baptisms. Who knows, you might want to go home after worship today, before the game begins, and hunt down a picture of your baptism, or look up the date of it in that old family Bible, or see if your gown might happen to be on a baby doll somewhere in your basement or attic. But the first problem that I think we have in thinking about Jesus' baptism is the big one. Why in the world would Jesus need to be baptized? The Gospel writer himself acknowledges this dilemma when he reports John's protest. I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? In his astonishment, we sense Matthew's, I think. Jesus grants the awkwardness of the situation and gives them both an out by explaining that this is a temporary condition. Let it be so for now, he says, and that in this way they will fulfill all righteousness. But while this may solve the initial concern of who would baptize him, we're still left, I think, with the bigger issue of why would Jesus be baptized at all? Given that we have historically connected baptism primarily to the forgiveness of sin, And our understanding, if Jesus is in fact the sinless Son of God, in what way would he even need to be baptized? Or to ask it more broadly, how does baptism benefit Jesus at all? Now on this point, the gospel writers and theologians through the ages and preachers and even Sunday school teachers all agree. Jesus' baptism is not simply a mechanism for forgiveness. Rather, it announces God's favor and establishes Jesus' identity. For example, in Matthew's account, the voice from heaven announces that Jesus is God's beloved Son, the one with whom God is well pleased. Baptism, then, for Jesus, was less about his forgiveness than it was about his commissioning, the inauguration, if you will, of his ministry, his mission, and the assurance of God's presence and pleasure with him. And that understanding of Jesus' baptism should help us with our own, because we can't really imagine the beautiful infants that are presented for baptism in our church as being much in need of forgiveness of sin either. But we struggle, I think, to bridge that gap completely and compare our own baptisms with Jesus' baptism. We don't want to assume equal footing, of course, but why wouldn't our baptisms be about our commissioning, announcing God's favor falling on us and establishing our identity as precious, beloved children of God? But that has the potential to make us uncomfortable, doesn't it? We're more comfortable focusing on the details of Jesus' baptism once a year and then letting it go again. So let's see. Uh, John protested. Jesus explained it in his own cryptic way. John finally agreed. Jesus goes down into the river, comes up out of the water. The heavens open up and the spirit descends like a dove. Yep. We remember the story, maybe better than we remember our own baptisms, right? And finally, there is that voice. 
the voice from heaven that says, this, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. And that's the part, my friends, that I think we're least inclined to compare to our own baptisms. So maybe this reminder will help. What comes immediately after Jesus is baptized by John? Do you remember? It's the wilderness. Jesus is led by the Spirit, some texts say driven by the Spirit, into the wilderness so that he could be tempted. It happens that way in Matthew and in the Gospel of Mark and in the Gospel of Luke. Baptism assumes wilderness. And that's a good comparison to draw between Jesus' baptism and our own. We each face wilderness. It's not to test our loyalty. It's not to tempt God's commitment. It's not to get us to turn on the Spirit. No, because none of that is actually biblical at all. A quick review of, the good, of a good chunk of the Old Testament reminds us that being in the wilderness is just part of what it means to be the people of God. We, each of us, face wilderness just like Jesus did. And we do it in light of our baptism. So as we step bravely into this new year, the year of our Lord, 2023, I wonder what wilderness you might be facing. Some of us face personal wildernesses related to financial stress or employment struggles, family tension, the concerns of aging, chronic illness. Your own wilderness might be about serious temptations, be they addictions or perhaps the insidious messages we get sucked into about not being skinny enough, not being strong enough, not being successful enough, or rich enough, or popular enough, or beautiful enough, or young enough, or whatever. It's a wilderness. It's a wilderness for us, and I suspect that each one of us is wandering in our own ways. But if we see our wandering as all about our own abilities to negotiate these trials, endure our burdens, push our way through all hardships as if surviving is somehow the same thing as salvation, we miss the message of baptism, friends. I don't know about you, but journeying through the wilderness and making it out alive by my own sheer will and perseverance doesn't sound very salvific to me. In fact, it sounds pretty lonely. It sounds kind of sad. And it doesn't sound like something that our God, who is all about relationship with us, demands. Now, wilderness can feel lonely, I'll admit. But we need to remember that all those wilderness times in the Bible, they were not ever individual affairs. The Israelites were not in the wilderness alone. They had each other, a whole community of God's people. And Jesus was not in the wilderness alone either. He had the Spirit and the promise of God's declaration just the moment before, this is my beloved, with him I am well pleased. No matter how desperate we feel, friends, we're never in the wildernesses of our lives alone. Our baptism propels us, if you will, into community. And if ever we rely on baptism as only that which safeguards our own individual security, we've misinterpreted Matthew's story altogether. On the first Sunday, of the, on the first Sunday after Epiphany, this is a promise to us, and a reminder. We are reminded of the promise that our baptism brings, the promise that even in our wilderness, even in spite of it, sometimes even because of it, our call 
to bringing about the kingdom of heaven is meant to be manifest to all. We're not privy to personal epiphanies, or if we are, we need to figure out how to share them or make it possible for others to experience them. Even in our wildernesses, here is that amazing voice again, echoing to us through the ages from the heavens. This is my child, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Sometimes I wonder if amid all of our customary focus on our baptism as washing away our sin, we've missed those profound words of amazing grace that are spoken to Jesus and are also spoken to us. We, too, are God's beloved children, those with whom God is well-pleased. God has declared to us in our baptism that we are enough, that God accepts us just as we are, and that God, God desires to do wonderful things through us and for us. Thanks be to God. Amen. be seated. The wondrous works of God are more than we can number. God has blessed us far beyond our ability to name the gifts. In our baptism, God has called us to a life of witnessing. Let us glorify God through deeds of light and through words that bless and heal. May our offerings reach out around the world in Christ's name.
Let us dedicate our gifts to God in the unison prayer of dedication. Holy God, we are marked and claimed as your people, so we we bring bring gifts that that represent our best, that that you might bless them and multiply their effectiveness among us and around around your world in Christ's name. We We thank you for times times of renewal and and reminders of of your blessings, which which equip us to give give ourselves more more fully in the the tasks you set before before us. Amen. Amen. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. Let those who have no money come and eat. God will satisfy our souls with a rich feast, and we will bless the Lord as long as we live. Friends, this is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites all those who trust him to share in the feast which he has prepared. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O God of mercy and might. In your wisdom you made all things and sustained them by your power. You've called forth women and men in every age to be your servants and to speak your word. When we rebelled against your call and turned from your ways, in your love you called us back to you. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You sent prophets to call us to justice and compassion. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with the choirs of heaven and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and majesty, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, in whom you have revealed yourself our light, and our salvation. Baptized in the waters of the River Jordan, Jesus took his place with sinners, and your voice proclaimed him beloved. Your spirit anointed him to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, to restore sight to the blind, and to free the oppressed. He lived among us in power and grace, touching lives with your healing peace. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. Just as this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. O God, as you once claimed us in the Spirit's waters, and count us now among your own beloved children, give us power to do your work, to show your love, and to live holy and joyful lives. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. We ask all this in the name of Jesus, praying together the words he taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And Jesus said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Whoever believes in me will never hunger. Whoever trusts in me will never thirst. Friends, these are the gifts of God given for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us drink together of the cup of our salvation. Join me now in our prayer after communion. We give you thanks and praise, O God, that you have fed us with your mercy and poured out your spirit in this place. Continue to nourish and fill us each day that we may live as your beloved people. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. the water that is part of our life has formed us and shaped us. In this water, we were baptized. This day, as you wash your hands, as you drink water, as you take your shower or your bath, remember your baptism and be thankful. May the Lord bless us and keep us, make his face shine on us, and give us his peace this day and forevermore. Amen.